So contrary to popular belief, the Arcanist is actually a top tier meta class. No, not kidding. No cap, no copium, if you know how to build the class. So in this video, we are going to go over a few renditions on how to most effectively build the Arcanist and you'll be surprised at the results. So without further ado, fellas, let's hop into the video. Hey, welcome back guys to my humble abode here in Cold Harbor. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video because I want to take time to not only explain some of the builds I've been cooking up on the PTS and also playtesting them. I also want to kind of talk about the pros and cons of the class and why everyone thinks this is just a bad class. Um, it obviously has a lot of negatives. For example, it doesn't have major breach. It doesn't have major prophecy. It doesn't have a burst heal. It doesn't have burst in general. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I will explain why there is a metric shitload of bursts on this class, even though there's no ability that has like a really high tooltip or whatever. A lot, a lot of the passes go into play and like how all the skills work together. There's a lot of behind the scenes that people who just take a look at the class, they they, they spend like an hour playing it. I'm like, oh right, yeah, this is trash. You know, this is going to be in bottom tier. No, not really. Once you spend four or five, you know, 10 hours in my case, testing the class and all the different renditions and builds, you're going to see very quickly that this is a, a definitely definitely a top tier class like no kidding so um the very first kind of thing i i i want to point out is um i actually want to congratulate zoss on making this class i am very very impressed um at first i wasn't at first i thought like everyone else this was a dog shit class and it's not worth your time playing yeah while well, it looks flashy it's just it's bottom tier it's um it's not so Let's kind of go ahead and explain um, what I'm talking about. Um, there is no other class that has everything that you need in the kit. Of course, like the cons I mentioned before, you know, not having major breach and prophecy and stuff like that. Yes, those do help out the classes, but it's not a make or break type of scenario. This look at my ability bar. This is what I will be running in open world. This build right here, which I will cover here in just a moment take a look at the abilities everything is from the class kit it has everything that you need if you read between the lines and really dev you know dig deep into the abilities themselves now there are a few abilities that are uh, kind of over tuned and we will also discuss those but um if the devs are watching this if you guys are paying attention like like awesome you know kudos to you on this class um really take the feedback seriously it's obvious that you guys know what you're doing with the class and the identity of it um i don't think a lot of people have kind of caught on to, to, to what's going on um th this class is deceptively strong because all of your damage most people in pvp you know hear me out th they build around single target damage they build around drag damage this this build i mean this this class doesn't really have any of that you're using dot pressure heavy hitting dots mind you so any sets that buff dots is an absolute plus and a bunch of channeled abilities and you know aoe not a lot of people are building against that and that kind of leads into why this class is deceptive right so yeah it, it, on on tooltip it doesn't look like you're hitting people you know very very hard but when you're actually just melting them because they're not built around it um this class is definitely going to be a a game changer for the meta um j just for example like just one of the passives just just off the top of my head is this uh this splintered secrets a passive like for every ability of slotted i mean this is 4k extra um penetration which is probably like eight percent increased damage that you know it, it, it's kind of um not weighted like it, it kind of goes under the radar i mean for example we'll just kind of take a look at the the build for a second i don't have any major breach or literally anything on i'm sitting at like, like 12k pin so this um, class naturally has a lot more pin than other classes, which is again deceptive because people are so worried about tooltips and such. But uh, let me just kind of go over um, this, um, some of the skills and abilities, and why this class um, is going to be really, really good. So uh, we're going to go ahead and address the elephant in the room, which is uh, this is your bread and butter. This is your burst. This uh, exhausting fake carver, I call it fart carver. So this is going to be. What you you line up with your kamehameha oh your 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 death combo so to speak so you're gonna pop your ultimate you're probably going to toss this out to stun them and mobilize them and then you're going to kamehameha them right so the glaring issue is that well you can just get bashed you can be un you know interrupted it's like okay well you know as soon as you get bashed it kind of wastes your 
your abilities, your class, I mean, it kind of wastes your burst. Your, your burst is done at that point, unless you can somehow during your, your Watcher Ultimate generate enough Crux, which you can with your Spamble. Your Spamble is fucking awesome, by the way, to generate Crux. Huh, that's me to get up to your, you know, your times three. Come on, homie, homie. Also, this has a directional component. You can't, if you're at the ground, like, it, it, it can it can miss like you can literally aim at the ground it's not like it just goes in front of you you gotta like pay attention to how you're aiming this but, but anyway the snafu to this is that well you can be interrupted well you can you run immovable pots which is really annoying but a lot of people don't even notice this room guard of freedom we'll go over all of the skills um one by one and explain why this build is gonna be absolutely fucking meta like th 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 this shit rips dude i have a, a couple dk dueling clips and it, it just melts a dragon I, like like no problem um a lot of people are playtesting this against other arcanist classes and you can't really get a feel for how the class performs until you're fighting against other classes and you're gonna see like very quickly it just just shreds man so rune guard of freedom again we'll go over everything this is going to give you minor resolve it's good you don't have to use vigor anymore it's going to give you minor protection for the... This is front and back bar, by the way, from when you apply it. And then this is your burst seal. This thing is amazing. It's like a set and forget buff. And then anytime you drop below 50%, it's going to heal you. You can reapply this indefinitely, essentially, and keep getting this 10k heal. And yes, it can crit. It's going to give you 3,000 armor, okay? But read the last part of it. It gives you crowd control immunity for 6 seconds. So... This is so good for your burst. You ever see this pop? You have your three cruxes. If your ward pops, for example, you have six seconds to just completely melt your opponent. You cannot be bashed. You cannot be stunned. You cannot be crushing shocked. You, you can't be interrupted during your burst. And Zoss has really taken their time and, and thought out this kit. I mean, it, it's taken a little while of how to piece everything together, but Rune Guard of Freedom is the absolute meta ability. It only costs like 3,200, which is uh, pretty insane. Um, you're exhausting fake harbor. You have to use this. So essentially when you get times three um, Or times three crux it does like 100% extra damage again This is aoe and dot damage which people are not building against and this is you know It, it goes through it pierces everyone. So this is a huge AoE you're just able to, to melt multiple targets down not just one. Okay, not just one and It slows them so the slow is very good because you need to keep up your your watcher i will say the watcher might need a little bit of a buff maybe like a 10 to 15 percent increased buff when it follows your target so a really good habit your, your ultimate's also very tricky to use um th there's after a lot of play testing there's there's kind of like a uh, a formula that you want to consistently land this so we'll just kind of go over the rest of the abilities you know just for a second then we'll kind of cover the sets again apologies for being a long video but i feel that all of this information needs to be said and explained thoroughly so you guys can like really understand why this is a good class so uh, Rune of Un uh, Uncanny Ad uh, Adoration. So this is the morph you want to use because the um, the the charm is unblockable, undodgeable. Um, if you use the other morph, it can be blocked. So you can definitely use this as a stun. It's got a huge range on it. It has a one second delay, so that means you can line up your burst around it. It also applies minor vulnerability, increases your damage by 5%, and it's awesome. Um, I do have Camouflage under this. This is the only non-class ability I have on this because, quite frankly, you don't need it. And this is just to give you Major Prophecy. Uh, and major savagery increasing your crit chance and it can also give you um your minor berserk when you're hitting flanking enemies and because all your stuff is aoe you're going to be quote unquote flanking enemies quite a lot so you get minor berserk as well so escalating rune blades this is really really strong um this ability by itself um this is a decent spammable um this can also like triple proc sets like a zerb blight to get three stacks really quickly um it does do a decent amount of damage and then uh, for every crux you have active um, on you this uh, damage actually goes up pretty high if you can see here on the tooltip I don't have anything specced into single target damage whatsoever all of my um, champion points and everything is into AoE as well as dot damage so you can see the tooltip on this is pretty pretty crazy so you don't want to necessarily just spin your crux willy-nilly you really want to time it out um, so you will be consuming your cruxes there is one skill defensively and then one skill offensively. I think that is the best way to do it. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, kind of wasting your cruxes and kind of here and there. So this is really good spam. We'll keep this up. It's range. Yeah, it can be road dodge, whatever. But um, I think this is um, quintessential on the build. If you're not going to use this as your main spammable, 
um, I think you kind of definitely need it because um, it will uh, do a metric. I mean, it, it's just really good for generating crux when you need it and not have, having to wait on passive abilities and other skill abilities to proc it. Um, you can also use this, um, I don't know, Cephalacros fail, Flail, I don't know what this is. I just call it Syphilis Flail. Uh, I mean, why not? Um, of all the abilities on the kids, I do believe this one does need a little bit of a buff on the execute damage, but essentially this ability, it will root your opponent. Um, this is really, it's kind of like a Dragonite. So you you have snares, you have roots, and you have an undodgeable, unblockable CC, which is like the formula for a, a decent class if you know how to play around it. So um, I'll kind of explain how you want to be using this in, in your, your burst rotation. So we'll go over all, all the, uh, the back bar abilities here in just a moment. But if you want to play this class correctly, obviously you will have your three crux. What you want to do, you will just want to go ahead and toss out your, your ultimate. You want to slow them, immobilize them with whatever. As soon as they're immobilized or slowed, you're going to stun them, which is going to stun them one second later. And then after they break that CC, you're going to Kamehameha them, which is also going to slow them the entire time you have it channeled on them. Up to, I think, 36% at uh, three cruxes. So you don't want to just like toss everything in all at once, right? You you, you don't want to just I'll go ahead and get my ultimate back here. You don't just want to immobilize them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you want to kind of time it out to make sure your your ultimate has time to, to marinate on your opponent. So you grab your three cruxes. Ideally, this is what I would do. I would cast the ultimate, call, you know, cast another one, and then I would root them. Probably do another weave. Then I would stun them, and then right after the stun, I would kamehameha them, and that way that way you get. Um, dur during the tail end of your Watcher Ultimate as well as your Kamehameha, you know, whatever. Um, you gotta do it a little bit quicker than what I did, obviously, because you saw that that uh, period at which the Watcher and the Kamehameha kind of like fell off. So you definitely gotta do it a little bit quicker than I did. But you want to not stack your slows and your roots and your stun. You want to kind of piece them out over time just to make sure that Watcher has enough time to keep up with whoever you're targeting. So um, that um is kind of what this ultimate's all about you definitely want this one that chases them you don't want to use the other one unless it's pve um but yeah this uh the front bar is um great uh, does a lot of damage it's very deceptive now back bar now this is where it gets pretty pretty nutty you have two abilities that are just um i think they kind of need nerfed a little bit i i don't want to talk too much about it because quite frankly i don't want them to be nerfed because they're awesome so the first one is Reconstruct the Domain. Um, this is going to give you uh, Minor Courage, increasing your weapon spell damage. This is going to give you 15% increased uh, um, resource regeneration, right? And it's also going to give you really good healing over time. Um, it's a very, very stacked ability. It's AoE. It is a little pricey, but you do have to remain in your circle. There's no like lingering effects unless you take the morph of the lingering effects. So you kind of do need to kind of cut around in this, kind of like a, a Dragonite Cinderstorm with a you know, bigger AoE. Um, the buffs it provides, it, it's very stacked. Um, you can flex this to, to something else, but uh, this is really, really strong. So the next skill I want to talk about is the bread and butter of the entire class, which is Impervious Rune Ward. This is the most devastating ward ever. If you do not wish to die, you will not die, assuming you have Magicka. Let's go over this just for a second. Like the Rune Knights of old, you summon a shield that absorbs 23,000 damage for one second. Let, let's go ahead and stop there. 23,000 damage, that's essentially, you know, like 11 to 12k ward just, just for a second. You know, you're about to take a lot of burst. You don't want to, like, apply this, you know, like a Sorcerer's Hardened Ward and just kind of let it marinate. You want to use this right before you're going to take a lot of burst. So not only does it give you essentially what will be like a 12k ward in Cyrodiil for the first second, but it also gives you an additional like 7,000 ward for the rest of the five seconds. So effectively, this is like a 20,000 damage mitigation shield if you use it correctly. Not only is it a 20,000 damage mitigation shield, and it's even not that expensive, you can see here on the tooltip, but it is going to heal you per crux that you have. This is going to be well over a 10k heal that can crit. Okay, this is amazing. This does everything that you need on the class. You don't have to sit there and channel the heal. You literally, when you're in a dire situation, you're gonna pop this. If you have three crux, it's cool. That's why I have so many passives and so many skills that uh, generate crux because the more crux you can generate, the better offensively and defensively. So when you activate your rune ward, see that crit for like a 19k heal, right? And that is absolutely incredible. It's going to give you 
amazing damage mitigation. If you are not using this, you have to use it. Okay, it, it is it is crazy. And let me talk about um, one more thing before we kind of go into um, the rest of the abilities. Um, a lot of the heals, this is how healing should be in the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, there are a bunch of abilities that require you to actually aim your abilities. You know, this creates this, you know, for people in front of you. You have Cascading Fortune. For example, we'll just go ahead and toss this on that you actually have to aim it in order to, you know, get a, a really good heal out of it. Um, I think going forward, if Zoss continues down this path, this is how you want the healing to be. You want some sort of skill component, not this smart healing that just heals everyone up to full, you know, picks the lowest health target. You need to make healing a little bit more skillful in PvP. I really like the approach that they have taken. Um, it, it, it's, it's really top tier. I don't really congratulate Zoss on a lot of things, but this one's really, really good. Um, going into the next ability, which is going to be Rune Guard of Freedom. So Rune Guard of Freedom, again, we kind of already covered this. It's going to give you Resolve. It's going to give you Protection. This is going to be a Burst Heal on top of this Burst Heal, right? So there is a Burst Heal component to the class. You just have to, like, understand, like, how to get it. You know, it, it's not just, like, Coag. Oh, I just hit, I just hit Y and get 20k. It, it's, it, it's not like that, okay? You have to actually not have a lizard brain and put a little bit of thought into it, right? So, um... Uh, the next ability we have is kind of like Siphoning Strike or, or whatever the, the Nightblade is where it kind of generates resources um, every time you deal damage or whatever. This is really, really strong. Um, it took me a little while to understand this tooltip. You actually don't even have to activate this to have a uh, major minor brutality. So this is going to be your source of uh, major sorcery and major savagery. Or, excuse me, major brutality, major sorcery, excuse me, increasing your weapon spell damage. You don't have to activate it. You just got to have it on your bar, which is a different ability that, that we've never seen this before. Um, this is a different ability. I mean, you don't have to activate if you don't want to. But when you do activate it, um, it does give you like a... Uh, it took me a little while to understand this. Um, so I'll go ahead and read it. Um, Etch the series of runes in your weapon and pulses every five seconds. The other morph is three seconds. Each pulse enhances your class abilities and strike an enemy with one of your ab abilities that deals uh, additional magic damage. So it doesn't really do anything to your abilities. It just adds a direct damage component of the 3500 to whatever ability you have. And this is on like a five second cooldown. Um, it, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's not like game breaking, but it's pretty nice. And also when you're dealing damage, it's going to generate you a lot of magic and stamina. So uh, this is uh, this is pretty cool. A uh, really cool buff that you technically don't even have to activate it. You just have it set and forget and you get uh, major sorcery and stuff. Really cool. Now, Crux Weaver Armor. Uh, this thing is awesome. It's really cheap last forever it gives you major resolve and also applies minor breach to your opponents when they hit you and also also it generates crux you know when you're back filling on your back bar you need heals or whatever you can get to your front bar to start generating crux with your your spammables and your aoe ccs and mobilizations or whatever um you just passively generate crux on your back bar and then you can in turn use your impervious ward to consume that crux and heal you in addition to getting a ward and there's a lot to it there is a lot of synergy in these abilities if you break them down i don't call anyone out but uh, you need to play the class to really understand like how how good it's going to be so uh, next is uh this ultimate uh i i think this is going to be a really cool ultimate for open world i mean this is like a 90k damage shield so it you're going to mitigate 60 percent damage and then all the damage that you take um uh you're going to you know blah 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 absorb it for x amount of time and then when the shield collapses you're going to have this huge AoE around you, which is just going to melt kids. If you're 1VXing and you take, I don't know, 100k worth of damage, it is going to distribute that over 10 seconds, okay? So if you can stay up on people, oh my god, dude, this thing just shreds kids. Uh, if you can take a lot of damage in open world. So this is very um, underrated. I did try a couple Battlegrounds. I wasn't recording because, you know, of, of course I can't hit the record button while I'm trying to make content. Um, but in Battlegrounds, this absolutely slaps. It's such a good defensive ultimate and it's really cool looking. So, um, there's a lot more I could go into. I've already spent probably 15 minutes of video kind of going over the synergies uh, between all of the abilities and uh, a, a lot of the passives um, I haven't really covered, um, but they are really strong. Um, some of which I, I'm kind of confused about, like um, Faded Fortune. Um, it gives you a crit damage multiplier, but crits for like really fast, hard hitting, you know, dots, it really doesn't do that much. Um, I will clear some misconceptions on uh, Psychic uh, Legion here. Um, so Psychic Legion... Um, I'll, I'll show you a couple of renditions of the builds which we're getting ready to hop into. Um, it actually doesn't really buff any of the damage from any of the stats effects besides besides burning, um, like bleeding and all that. I, it doesn't really apply to it. I'm not sure why. I don't, I'm not sure if that's a, a bug or whatever because bleeding is technically a stats effect. 
but it, it 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 doesn't like increase the damage of bleeding, but increases the damage of the hemorrhage stas effect. So I, I guess maybe I'm misunderstanding, you know, how stas effects work. So hemorrhage is the main stas effect that this um passive is going to increase as well as the burning stas effects. Such so, so if you're running sets like Zons, for example, Zons always applies the burning stas effect like every single second. So this is Zons is gonna be really good on this class as well. If you're dueling, which is gonna be in one of the uh sets we cover. So um, I don't think there's really anything else that I need to mention um, in these class passives really offhand. You know, the, the, it, it's just a very synergistic class. You do get minor evasion for free, which is nice, um, which is going to reduce you know, all your AOE damage you know, by 10%, which is freaking awesome because, you know, this is the AOE, you know, damage over time class. Uh, most of this is just, you know, synergistic stuff. Nothing uh, too uh, crazy to talk about besides the um, Iridition, which is going to give you a lot of recovery, which is uh, pretty amazing. And then also, you know, the intricate rune forms, you know, really helps, you know, kind of reinforce the idea of using your your uh, your runes and stuff. So, uh, one thing I did forget to mention, kind of what the uh, the tooltips are lo looking like on the back bar. So, just kind of give you guys an idea of what everything looks like, uh, recovery wise. Um, here it is on the back bar. We got 31k resistances, um, a hell uh, amount of magic and stamina recovery. It might be absolute overkill, and that's not even popping a potion, right? If, if we uh, you know decide to pop a potion. We're getting up to like 3,000 magic recovery and like 2,500 stamina recovery. Uh, that's probably overkill if I'm being honest with you guys. But uh, <laughs> it is what it is. You could potentially put on Bewitch Sugar Skulls and be perfectly, perfectly fine. So you don't necessarily need all this extra regeneration. So uh, a front bar, here's what kind of everything's looking like. Uh, spell critical, crit resist, you know, spell penetration. I think we've already covered this. But yeah, that'll kind of give you an idea of what to expect. Um, all right, uh, let's go over the actual builds themselves. So I did mix it up a little bit, hoping I can get a little bit more view time out of these videos. Yeah, I went over the skills first and set the set. So um, one, uh, this is the open world build that I want to kind of go over. Um, this is going to be probably the best set that you can possibly run. So this is Deadly Strike. Um, it's a medium armor set. It's going to give you weapon spell damage, crit chance, weapon spell damage, and then the five piece. It increases damage of your channel, um, your channel abilities and also your damage over time abilities by 15%. So, um, clear up some misconceptions really quick. Uh, even though this is a cast time, which should be quote unquote channeled ability, um, syphilis flow does not get buffed by this. What does get buffed by deadly strike is your exha exhausting fate carver, as well as your uh, Ty King's gaze ultimates, as well as your sanctum of abyssal sea ultimates, um, on your back bar. So, um, your main burst combo, it, it doesn't buff everything, obviously, you know, like escalating room blades, but it does buff what you need it to buff in order to secure kills. So, um, that's going to be the first set we're running. I'm running a flame damage. Everything's sharpened, by the way. Flame damage enchantment for the burning stas effects, since you have a passive that increases the damage of stas effects. And then, um, also disease enchantment you need. Um, I think this is really good. You either run disease or poison. Poison will actually do damage and it will um, get bolstered by your passive, so maybe poison would be a better alternative here. Monster set running Balorg. Um, th again, this is open world dueling, a little bit different setup. Balorg, um, you, you need you need the extra spell and physical uh, penetration damage and uh, um, weapon spell damage, in my opinion, because your your main combo is going to have a few people jumping on you. You're going to toss out your Watcher and then your Kamehameha, so you need to during that time kill people. Um, you can kill people without that. Trust me. Uh, how wonky the CC is, you can catch a lot of people off guard and in roll dodge, and they're they're they're, they're just gonna pop, right? And then also when you catch them in the roll dodge, you just, you just fist them, you know, with this little guy. But so um, that is going to be um, probably the monster state of choice. Maybe possibly Mars looks if you want a little bit more neutral play, but we'll go over that in a moment. Of course, Mars Bomb. I mean, Mars Bomb is going to be absolute meta. This patch, next patch, every patch they did decide to leave it untouched. Um, all the medium pieces are going to be well fitted, I should say. A multi and faceted enchants on everything. Mars Bomb, uh, Balorg's Light, you know, whatever. And then you have like a, a One Piece training. I'm going to quickly go through this. I won't spend a lot of time because this is subject to change. Mythic item, Sea Serpent Coil, and then Mars Bomb Rings, one infused cost reduction, and weapon spell damage for your Mars Ring. Uh, back bar obviously is going to be Mars Bomb My Staff Defending with a Berserker enchantment. Uh, very, very cookie cutter, but. Um, the, the, the main thing I want to talk about, you know, again, is going to be dead, Deadly Strike Set. This is going to be probably best in slot um, for most builds on the Arcanist. If you come up with something other than that, I mean, we'll, we'll just have to see when uh, you know, Necron goes live. 
So the next build I want to talk about, these are mostly uh, dueling builds or different renditions of dueling builds. If you guys are interested, I stated before that this class was missing like major breach and stuff like that. And this pretty much takes care of it. So this is pretty much what the Stam Sork is, right? Going to be running Masters um, Perfected um, uh, Front Bar. So this is going to increase the damage of like Rending Slashes and stuff. So uh, one thing about Rending Slashes um, is that your passive does not buff the damage of Rending or Blood Craze. The only pass, the, the only damage that this buffs is the damage from the Hemorrhage status effect when it ticks, not actually Rending itself. So just you know, clearing that up. And also the initial hits it actually doesn't buff that at all. So um, I tested that. Vate Shran, again, this is going to be, you know, your, your source of major breach plus the, the beam is going to do crazy damage. Plus it does all the status effects, again, stacking from your passive. Zons is absolutely nutty on this. It is super nutty in duels. You're just going to melt everyone, man. It is, it is over. Like once you activate your, your room ward, get the immunity and Zon is proccing and you pop your roll, it is, it is over like th there's so much damage from this it's 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 just incredible again you could potentially transition this in the open world as well because everything we're talking about is aoe even zons is aoe you know in dot damage i don't know if you guys know that but yeah it does so really really good monster set uh, of course mars bomb uh, we have druids for the one piece health we don't want trainee for one, one piece health we have three mars bomb in the body reinforced and then sea serpent's cool mars bomb mars bomb right uh, very very cookie cutter nothing too crazy again we have disease and flame damage and shamans on our front bar Sword and Iron Hone instead of Sharpen. Um, there is one other build I want to quickly go over. If you don't want to go the Zons route, you think it's too cheesy. Um, you can go with the Marslux route as well. Really nothing has changed except you're going to be running a Marslux instead of Zons, uh, which is also really, really strong. Because you're just going to weave in like a medium attack before you go in for your burst. And you're going to have Hellacious dot damage. And get, get, right, you guys get it. So um it's probably like 20 25 minutes in a video now i really hope it's not that long but i mean it is what it is that's what she said so let's go into some of the uh the champion points that i have opted for we'll go into the the open world champion points because this is what i i, I want to kind of focus on a vampire stage three obviously um i forgot to go over them um, we're at kind of a dark elf i'm just playing around with the dark elf i i think that's really good you could run the but uh, i don't think so dark elf is really really strong uh running the b uh, excuse me the Smoked bear haunch, or you use jewels and misrule, you know, whatever. So let's go over the uh, the champion points I'm opting to use. What I would actually suggest, unless they fix it, is going to be uh, cleansing revival. So cleansing revival, um, is actually bugged, and you can proc this cleanse effect at any threshold, uh, health threshold percentage. So um, this is essentially like a, I'm a hit tracker's guide to Mars bomb if you don't want to run it. So um, I would definitely uh, slot this here um, if you can. Uh, it, it's I don't think they're going to fix it because not too many people have brought attention to it, but um, we'll kind of go over the, the rest of the CP. Finding Wars, again, for the AoE damage, Thaumaturge, which is um, quote-unquote dot damage. Most of our abilities are dot damage. You know, most people aren't building against dot damage, you know what I mean? So, and then we got uh, Enduring Resolve, reduces damage taken by damage over time effects, and this is just for dueling. You could, uh, probably in open world, you probably want Ironclad, something like that. Or you could just not go defensive CP at all. You can go somewhere like the Raffle Strikes just to really bolster your damage. Uh, go over into the Red Tree. Red Tree is um, pretty, pretty basic. I'm actually running Bastion just because that ward is super, super strong. And this also allows you to play better against Sorcerers. So Sorcerers will be able to shield stack through all your damage. Well, if you toss on Bastion, um, you'll be doing 15% increased damage to their shields as well. So uh, this is uh, really, really um, uh, good on the build, to be honest. Pain's Rescue, Sustained by Suffering, then Fortified. Yeah, you can uh, replace this with Survival Instincts. That's entirely up to you. All right, so the TLDR, I'll just kind of go ahead and summarize everything. I think the Arcanist, if played correctly and in the right hands, will be a very, very top tier class going into the upcoming meta. Hopefully there's not a lot of too drastic of changes that the devs decide to make on its behalf and community feedback because Quite frankly, as someone who can kind of see between the lines and see how the meta is shifting, this this class is fine. Um, it, it's I don't think it's going to be like super revolutionary, super OP, but I I do think this is such a good starting point for the PTS. It's going to be a very long PTS cycle, and who knows how they're going to change things. But as of right now, as it stands, if I was making a tier list, I would put the Arcanist in a A or an S tier. Um, probably S tier because the uh, the sheer amount of utility it can possibly offer in group play, I would put it in A tier. 
um, because um, solo potential it does require you to understand the game understand the class and just 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 be be decent a potato can toss this class on expect to have um, really good results in open world and solo i mean it's just not going to happen so um with all that being said that's been my assessment of the class let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments i'll look forward to all of the hot takes and all of the the comments that is going to arise from this video it'll be a really good discussion let me know what you guys think if i miss anything that might be worth mentioning also let me know down in the comments and before i peace out guys a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members and all of my uh, my coaching disciples as of late you guys are absolutely phenomenal like um we're gonna make pvp great again we're gonna make it fun like there, there's still a lot of exploits i need to get into and explain and i don't know if i want to drop those videos yet or not but uh that time will come uh, when i decide to unveil you know kind of, kind of peel back the uh the curtain so to speak so if you guys will be notified for all that hit the bell notification icon you guys know what to do so yeah i'm done talking you guys have a good night peace